I want to bring in now Bernadette woods Plackey, Chief Meteorologist and Climate Matters Program Director at Climate Central. Bernadette, welcome. So more than two dozen tornadoes touched down across six states. Give us some background on how these tornadoes formed. Well, thanks for having me. And it's a shame it's for such a tragic situation. But to break down some of the science behind tornadoes, you really need three key ingredients. The first is a warm, moist atmosphere that can give rise to thunderstorms. And we had record-breaking warmth. And that is shifting with climate change right now in big ways. The second is a big contrast to drier, cooler air that can provide some sort of a trigger for a thunderstorm to get going. In this case, a front. In some cases, for people who live across the plains, they understand the term dry line, an area that can trigger storms or a tropical system that makes landfall, but something to really ignite those storms. And the third is spin. And the technical term for that is called shear. What we have is this changing of wind direction and speed as you go up in the atmosphere, but you need that twist to actually get that thunderstorm to a tornadic formation. So you need that warm, moist atmosphere. You need the contrast with cooler, drier air to spark some sort of a thunderstorm, and you need a twist within that. And we had all of that really, unfortunately, set up too well on Friday night. Hmm. Well, the most destructive tornado moved on a 250-mile path through four states, Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, and Kentucky. The National Weather Service is expected to perform a survey to see if it was actually one contiguous tornado or several produced by a singular storm. What more can you tell us about this, Bernadette? Well, this is like an autopsy of the event, and the reality is It'll factor how we look at this in the record books, but it doesn't really change things for those on the ground who are affected by this. If the tornado stayed on the ground the entire time, which is just absolutely extraordinary, it will go down as one long track storm. The reality is the supercell, the parent thunderstorm that gave rise to this tornado, even if the tornado picked up at times on that path, that continued along this track. And that's what they're looking at right now. And for it to be so long and so intensive, it requires additional people involved and additional time to really look into where this stepped down. Did it pick up in different places? And within that path, what were the different intensities? Because it didn't maintain the same intensity for the entire duration. So that's what they're looking at right mm -hmm. now. They will continue to look at that. And they're working super hard. They know people want the answers to this. But as I said, the reality is the people who are affected, whether it's an EF4, an EF5, whether it picked up and then went down again, we right. see the destruction. Right. They care less about the the trivia uh, around the facts of the storm as much as the impacts that they're now suffering through. Um, uh, along the lines of, of the impacts of it, there's a lot of, of talk about climate change and whether specific weather events like this should be linked to climate change. Can you tell us about that, Bernadette? And do you expect that we will see more outbreaks like this in the future? Well, climate change we know is changing our weather overall. Now, how it plays out in different types of weather is still what we're learning. When it comes to heat, you can almost always connect heat with climate change. More heavy rainfall events, actually the rise to more wildfires really setting the stage. But with tornadoes, it gets a little bit more tricky. And the reason for that comes to the three ingredients that we talked about in the beginning. The first one being warm, moist atmosphere. We know that that is on the rise with climate change. That ingredient is one we are definitely seeing more of. But then it comes to really some different patterns when we get into how the thunderstorms spark around these atmospheres and these environments, and if there will be that necessary twist to create from a thunderstorm to a tornado. And that gets into even geekier science, which we'll only touch on here briefly, but it relates back to our <laughs> jet stream and how our weather patterns move around the world. And there's really early research into how climate change may be changing our jet stream. It's not settled science. If you like science, it's really fun to follow. But the thing is, it's not settled yet. So it's too early to say whether that's a factor or not. But if you don't have the spin, and if the jet stream puts some of these environments in different places and different times, then you won't get tornadoes out of those thunderstorms. But we do know that the first ingredient, the warm, moist atmosphere, is absolutely on the rise with climate change. In this particular event, we saw record temperatures, widespread mm -hmm. record warmth. And just even take a snapshot of this month so far, we've had about 13 
1,300, yes, 1,300 record high temperatures to about 11 record low temperatures. So that's way out of whack and shows you what one of the ingredients that's going on with this. Another thing though to bring in with climate change and how it plays out with tornadoes, it gets a little more nuanced here, but it could be where and when we're seeing these storms. And that gets into our risk mm -hmm. factor and our threat because some of these areas that are used to seeing tornadoes in the more typical tornado times, maybe prepared. I mean, if you're sitting on a porch in Mississippi and you know it's spring and you see a tornado, you may be attuned, I mean, a thunderstorm, you may be attuned to that could produce a tornado, but you may not be thinking that same way in December. So with our changing climate and this extra warmth in our atmosphere, it's forcing our springs to start earlier. It's creeping into our falls with this warmth to stay later. So it's shifting some of the timing of when we see these mm -hmm. outbreaks and when we see, in general, thunderstorms pop up. And then on top of it, there's some early research that shows maybe the areas being affected are shifting a little bit to the east. But the summary is climate change is changing our weather. The nuances of tornadoes are still under research, but one of the key ingredients is definitely being affected. All right. Bernadette Woods-Plackey, thank you so much. Thank you.